The Lord be with you. Thank you. And thank you for coming out this evening for this evening's message and service. I'm Pastor Greg Bowen from Emmanuel Luther Church in East Dundee, and I'm very honored to be here this evening. Our announcements are printed for you in this nice purple sheet. Please read them over, but when you can't read them when during the sermon, right. You may not read these during the sermon, but seriously, uh, look them over uh, and keep, you'll see under the prayer request, keep Wally and Lisa and, and little Everly in your personal prayers throughout the week, along with uh, all those whom we pray. So those will be the announcements for you. Uh, our theme tonight is the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. So let that begin to germinate as we begin with our hymn of opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let's turn our hearts and our minds over to worshiping our Lord.
will stand. We stand for confession and absolution. We make our beginning in the name in which we've been baptized, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. And now the good news. Upon this, your confession. I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the, guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis, the 22nd chapter. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted, lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there 
and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his, his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, and he said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from James, the first chapter. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought forth us by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation, creatures. This is the word of the Lord. If you're able to stand, we stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Let us make confession of our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Our text for this weekend's meditation is from the book of Galatians, the second chapter, the 20th verse, where Paul writes these words. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, it is I who no longer live, but it is Christ who lives in me. That is our text. Would you just pause and bow your head and pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Real famous author a number of years ago went in to have a heart procedure. You see, his heart was rapidly beating at times, and other times it was going too slow. It was out of control. And medication did not work, and so his doctor said, well, we need to have a little bit of a surgery. We're going to do an ablation, and to ablate means to burn. And so what was going to happen was, through a couple arteries, two micro cables were going to be put in him all the way up into his heart. One cable was a little bit of a camera, and the other cable was that little torch. And the idea was that the doctor would torch the misbehaving cells in the heart. And so as they were being wheeled down, the author was being wheeled down to the surgery room, the, the surgeon was walking with him, and, and the author said, well, you are going to kill the bad cells in my heart. And the surgeon said, that's the idea, yes. Well, when you're in there, can you maybe just torch guilt and maybe some pride and selfishness and some other sins that you see? And the doctor smiled and he said, no, I'm sorry, that's above my pay grade. But it's not above God. You see, God is about the business of changing our hearts. He's about the business of giving us a new heart. It started way back in Ezekiel. Ezekiel tells us that God says that he is going to replace our, the heart of stone with the living heart of his spirit. Our text through Paul reminds us that it is not that we live, but rather the emphasis is that Christ lives within us. God has given you and me, by faith, a new heart. And that should change everything. Tara and Tim Storch know about new hearts, unfortunately. Back in 2010, their daughter Taylor in a skiing accident died. And those poor parents went through something that no parent would ever dream of and never want to do. The worst, going through the funeral of a, a child. But some good came from it. Tina and Tim decided to give the healthy organs from Taylor's body away. And no one needed a heart more than Patricia Winters. Five years before that accident, Patricia Winters' heart began to fail. And at the time of the accident, she was just laying in bed in Phoenix, could barely move. Her heart was so weak and so damaged. And it turned out that Patricia Winters was a perfect match for Taylor's heart. And so the Storches agreed to, to give that heart to Patricia Winters. They only had one request. Tara made it. She said that after you recover and get well, I want to be able to hear the beating heart within you. And so after Patricia Winters received the heart and after her recovery, Tim and Tara flew from Dallas to Phoenix to meet with Patricia Winters. And the two women embraced and cried for a while. And then it was time. Patricia handed Tara the stethoscope and she put it on her ears and then she put the hearing right on 
the heart of Patricia, and she listened to that beating heart within Patricia. And was it not the heart of their daughter, Taylor, whose heart was beating? Wasn't it Taylor's heart? Of course it was. It was in a new body. And so when Jesus, rather God the Father, listens to your heart, he does not hear your heart of stone. He does not hear the the sinful heart of humanness, but rather he hears the heart of Jesus. You see, Jesus is in your heart. He dwells within you. And we shouldn't really be surprised at this. Paul tells us 126 times that God dwells within us. John refers to this union 26 times. You and I, this Lenten journey, should have a renewed attitude and maybe remember something that we don't apply to ourselves any longer, that Jesus lives within us. Jesus lives within you. This little girl was, she had a little bit of a throat cough and soreness, and so her mom decided to take her to the the doctor. And so they brought the little girl into the doctor's office, and of course the doctor wanted to take a look down the throat of the little girl, and she clenched her teeth and would not open her mouth. So the mom said, please open your mouth for the doctor. No. Clenched her teeth. And the doctor said, it's okay. I'll take care of this. And so he took out his stethoscope and he put in one ear and he put the hearing on the heart of the little girl. And he says, what do I hear? Is that Winnie the Pooh? And the girl giggled. And he says, no, it's not Winnie the Pooh. Is Is that Daffy Duck that I hear? And the girl giggled again, and then he said, no, it's not Daffy Duck. It's Minnie Mouse. And finally, the girl blurted blurted out, oh, doctor, Jesus is in my heart. Minnie Mouse is on my underpants. It takes a child to remind us of a great truth. Jesus is in your heart. By the grace of God, for Jesus died on that cross to shed blood so that you might be forgiven. And he rose on that Easter day, of course, so that you might have new life. And he didn't stop there. You see, he wants you to live a new life. He wants you to live a life of vitality, not the life of sinfulness, not the life of selfishness and guilt, not the drudgery of of all that we would do without him, but rather he wants to be your Lord. But we don't like that, do we? I remember uh, when I used to go to Sunday school at St. Peter Lutheran Church in in Arlington Heights, and and our Sunday school teacher, she'd always ask us, where's Jesus? And we'd always say, he's everywhere, right? But then she'd get a little more specific, and she'd keep asking us until we all said, he's here. You see, we teach our little children that Jesus is within us. But as we begin to grow, we seem to put that truth aside, don't we? Even as Lutherans, we kind of put that truth aside. You know why? I believe it's because we don't want Jesus that close all the time. Oh, we want him close when we're in a jam. We want him next to us to to get us out of that trouble we're in. We want his forgiveness, we want his love, we want his blessings, but we don't always want him in us. Because we want to be the Lord of our own lives sometimes. And it's amazing where we take Jesus, isn't it? We take him to some pretty dark places, don't we? Because he never leaves you. Never. So be careful where you take him. 
I have to be careful where I take Jesus. And he never leaves you because he loves you so much. He forgives you and renews you. And he wants your life to have meaning. He wants your life to be changed. And the fact that Jesus who dwells in you should change everything, it certainly might change our perspective of God. And it really ought to change how you look at yourself. You are worthy in the eyes of God so that he would dwell within you, not just lead you, not just carry you, not just walk beside you, not just hold you in the palm of his hand, but he thinks you are so worthy that he wants to dwell within you. And he dwells within all who believe. And that should change how we treat one another. The fact that Jesus died on a cross, that bloody cross, the fact that he was damned so that we would never have to be should change how we live. The fact that he lives within us should cause us to strive to live the life that he would have us live and put away our selfish, sinful agendas. Grace, the grace of having him dwell within us should change us. If we accept the grace of Christ and receive it, we're to share it. Victoria Rivolo learned about the unfairness of life because life isn't always fair, is it? It certainly is not easy. Even with God dwelling within us, life is not easy. Life is not always fair, but he promises to get us through. And Victoria Rivolo learned that in a very harsh way. Back in 2004, this 44-year-old woman at the time was driving home after witnessing her niece's recital. It was a cold November night, and all she wanted to do was get home, light a fire, pour herself some tea, and, and sit in her favorite chair and just relax the rest of the evening. She never saw the gray Nissan coming towards her from the other direction, nor does she have any recollection of that teenage boy hanging out of one of the windows, holding, above all, a frozen turkey. The teenage boy threw the turkey at her windshield. It went through her windshield and smashed the steering wheel inward. Her face, all of her bones were shattered like a plate on a concrete floor. She fought for her life in ICU for weeks. Doctors had to reattach one eye synthetically. They had to wire her jaw shut. And they had to put in titanium bolts into her cranium. All because of a prank. Nine months later, a courtroom was packed and Victoria Rivola was able to see the prankster for the first time. And she came face to titanium bolted face with that young man, Brian Cushing. Brian was no longer that brash kid laughing and screaming out of a car window. No, he was a puddle of tears. He was sobbing and regretted deeply what he had done after he had, especially after he had seen the damage that he had done. And the courtroom was packed because, you know, we want justice. We, we, we want to, we want to get back at those horrible things. And so the courtroom was packed to hear the sentence that day said by the judge. And it was time to deliver the sentence and the courtroom got very quiet and the judge read, 
six months in prison, five years probation, some counseling, and a number of hours of community service. The courtroom erupted. They could not believe the sentence that they just heard. Everyone objected. Everyone except Victoria Rivola. The light sentence was her idea. When the judge quieted the courtroom, she walked over to Brian Cushing, who was still sobbing. And she took her hands and she held his face and brushed his hair. And then she said, loud enough for the judge and all to hear, I forgive you. And I want you to have the very best life that you can. Afterward, outside, when she was interviewed by one of the reporters, the reporter asked her point blank, how could you do that? How could you forgive? How can you lighten that sentence? And she said, God has given me chance after chance after chance. He, he keeps forgiving me, and he keeps gracing me with another opportunity, another chance, another chance, and another chance. And, and God just asked that I just pass that on. You see, grace changed Victoria Rivolo. The presence of God in her heart took over. She put aside her anger. She put aside her hurt. She put aside her desires to get back and allowed God to work. The fact that Jesus lives within me, the fact that Jesus lives within you should change your life and how you live it and how you treat one another, how you treat yourself, how you gather for worship, how you advertise this gracious God. It should change everything. And as we march on closer and closer to Jerusalem this Lenten season, and as we peek in and we see the Christ on the cross, we are reminded that God wants you to have the very best life that you can. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding guard our hearts and our minds into Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, as we enter this Lenten season of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ and instruct and lead us by your spirit and your ways so that we may repent and believe the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you place the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten son, that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might possess the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church and all those called to preach and teach within her with the certainty that those gates cannot prevail against them that in faith they may boldly trample every power of the enemy underfoot. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, and every Christian home from the assault of the evil one. As your son overcame Satan in the desert by the word of God, so also give us victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy. Father of lights, 
from whom every good and perfect gift comes down to us from above. Keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sin and help us to use them rightly in service to you and our neighbor. Bless President Biden and Governor Pritzker and all our leaders that we may be governed wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and all those to come. Lord, in your mercy. Most high God, our refuge in every trouble, you have promised to hear when we call to you. We pray that you would command your angels to guard our brothers and sisters, especially Wally, Mary Beth, and Lisa, and all those who suffer in our midst. Keep them from every evil that can befall the body, mind, and soul. We also give thanks with the family of Everly Buxton. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we remember with thanksgiving those before us whom you brought forth by the word of truth, who now live and reign in your presence with your Son. As you have also brought us forth by that word in baptism, we pray that you would bring us to full maturity by your word, that we too may be gathered with them to your Son on the glorious harvest of the last day. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. If you're able to stand, we stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that we may be with cleansed hearts, we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and the archangel, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On the very night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Do this often in remembrance of me. And after they had supped, and when he had given thanks, he took the cup, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
If you're able to stand, please stand. And now may this eating and drinking of the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen each of you and keep you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart now alive in Christ, fully forgiven. Go with him dwelling within your heart and go in peace. Amen. The Nuke Dimittis.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this beneficial gift. And we ask that you have your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his perfect peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.